when I quit all my drugs and everything, by the grace of God, I had never voted. I didn't know a liberal from a conservative. I didn't know a Democrat from a Republican. I knew nothing. And I didn't even care. I didn't, well, you know, politics didn't affect me. That's what I thought. But when I came out of crack addiction and everything, it was like coming out of a coma. Well, I woke up from years of addiction and I was oblivious as to what was going on in our country. Terrible political correctness, people saying happy holidays instead of Merry Christmas. And I'm going, I look around and I go, what's going on here? My friends are all unemployed. They're losing their houses. I had already lost to mine. Could it have something to do with the crack cocaine addiction? <laughs> and the worst thing he discovered when he woke up from his coma is people are saying happy holidays. Um, we got a president giving money to an evil empire. We got halftime of, of, of uh, baseball tournaments for Little League, and they're giving out first place trophies to everyone. I go, what is going on? I mean, everything had changed. I'm going, this is crazy. In 2013, he married his girlfriend of two years, Dallas Yoakum, only to divorce her weeks later. As he told the Star Tribune that year, the couple was driving together in July, just one month after their nuptials, when Yoakum dropped a bombshell. She said, just leave me alone or you're going to hear something you don't want to hear. And of course, I said, what do you mean? And she looked at me while I was driving and said, I don't love you. I never loved you. You're boring. We don't have anything in common and you've ruined the last two years of my life. Michael and Dell filed for divorce days after Dallas Yoakum's diss and she left the state with her brother. When Lindell looked back at their photos together, he noticed his wife never looked happy. That's when he realized it may have been all about money for her. <laughs> it couldn't have been about the drugs or him being a pathological liar. It had to have been. She just was really into money. She was a gold digger. Well, I met this gal, Kendra, in the summer of 14. My pillow was within two days of going under. We were millions of dollars in debt. I didn't know what I had done wrong. I, I know other, you know, I took everything in house then. I now bring you back in time to the summer of 2015. I see Donald Trump coming down an escalator and announcing he's running for president. In 2015, I had a dream, one of my God dreams, that I would be in a room with uh, then president, uh, our candidate, uh, with Donald Trump. And about two weeks later, he announced he was running for president. I'm going, okay, what does this all mean? Well, then uh, I kept that dream that I had in 2016, uh, I got an email from him and said, Mike, would you would you come? This is Donald Trump. Would you come and meet me at Trump Tower in, in New York City? And I'm going, what? And and I had this meeting with him, this private meeting for a half hour. He noticed my cross first that I always wear on TV. He said, Mike, are, you always wear your cross. Are you a Christian? And I said, yes, Mr. Trump. And this is the divine appointment. And for me, it was a divine and, or, and miraculous moment. I felt that something miraculous was about to unfold. I then I found myself wanting to learn something I knew nothing about, which was politics. It didn't make any sense what, what, what people were doing. I walked out of that office after meeting with him, and I knew God had chosen him for such a time as this. I walked out of there and I didn't know anything about politics. I go, wow, this is going to be the best president in history. And I was all in. Wait, guys, I know nothing he about this. But I'm telling you right now. He studied up, though, like right after that meeting so <laughs> much that again. it made up for the all <laughs> for the, the ignorance. years. Uh, Mr. Lindell met with candidate Trump a number of times during the campaign. He also spoke at Trump's packed Minnesota rally just two days before the election. And he was at the VIP Trump victory party the night of the election in New York. York City. Lindell was also at the VIP celebrations in Washington, D.C. during the inauguration. I was so excited at the inauguration for to, to finally be able to tell people, see, look what he's doing, look what he's doing, and this is what's going to happen. And more and more people are going to, he's going to be the best uniter. It doesn't look like it now, but he will be an amazing uniter for this country. And what? And in 2017, he attended a spiritual retreat to explore his feelings. He told the Salvation Army Florida edition, I went in there with the hope that I would get what Kendra had, this relationship with Jesus. I totally surrendered. It was the most amazing thing for me. Since that time, I can now talk about Jesus Christ in the same way I used to talk about a pillow. I talk about it with the same passion. Seeds were planted my whole life and God chased me basically. And when did chased. he catch you? I'm ready for this? February 18, 2017. 
That's why I did a full surrender. Two years ago. Yeah, to, to a full surrender. And what happened there, now I can go out and speak out for Jesus like I could a pillow, you know, with that same passion. And um, I went to U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis about a couple months after uh, um, that uh, born-again experience. And they, I, I prayed 50,000 millennials and told my story about five minutes worth. And about a year later, I went to the White House. I was invited to the White House, and I walked in there, and, and there's an empty seat here, and I said, who's sitting here? And he goes, the president is. He wanted to sit by you, and I'm going, what? And I'll tell you, at that moment, all my friends are going, what's Mike doing? I, you know, he's sitting with the president. He goes, he goes, this has to be Jesus. There is no way this ex-crack addict could be hanging around with the president. I actually bought a couple of pillows, and they're very good. I have to tell you, they're great. I've slept so much better ever since. <laughs> I've been everywhere from people that eat with four forks to no forks. And I'll tell you one thing I learned in all those years of being in that bar, I could judge character. And I'm telling you, he was just genuine. I, I mean, it was amazing. And mm. you know what? What's happening is the whole country is is coming on board, and they, they're going to see that having a pragmatic, common-sense president who's an information vacuum cleaner takes it all in. Who? What other president would take and listen to private sector people, take it in from, um, listen to his governor, listen to everyone before he makes decisions? <laughs> But when he, you know, the guy, it's amazing having a businessman. I don't call it the Republican Party. He's changed it to the, the common sense party. You know, people ask me all the time. They say, what's the best thing the president's done so far? One stands above all others. You smash political correctness. What? These are the best times ever. And the media ruins it for everyone saying, oh, there's a recession coming or this and that, or here's some more <laughs> fake news. And, and uh, you know, we're going to try and impeach them. You know, those are, that's a joke. They're trying to destroy the best thing we've ever got going for us. And we keep down this path. And it's absolutely amazing. You look around you, the best wall, the best stuff. Uh, um, in um, stock market, I mean, and they call me up and go, yeah, Mike, um, you know, the, the pre there's a uh, we think there's a recession coming and the president says it's just fake news that we're doing, that people are, the media is doing that to ruin the economy. And I go, of course the media is doing that to ruin the best economy ever. It is fake news. Just because you might not like the president because he's different than what you're used to and he tells it like it is, and you might not like him personally, but I know him personally. And you know what? What you see, he's got a heart of gold. He cares about each and every person. He's as far from racist as I am. All these things they say about it is the biggest lies in the history. What? A friend of mine, Mike Lindell of my pillow. Boy, do you sell those pillows? That's unbelievable what you do. This is supposed to be a White House meeting to talk about coronavirus. Okay, well, my pillow is a U.S. vertically integrated company. Thank you, Mr. President, for your call to action, when, which has empowered companies like my pillow. Now I wrote something off the cuff, if I can read this. Okay. <laughs> God gave us grace on November 8, 2016. God had been taken out of our schools and lives. A nation had turned his back on God. Our president gave us so much hope. We will get through this and get back to a place that's stronger and safer than ever. Thank you, Thank you, Mike. And these hosts on MSN, Jim Acosta was sitting 10 feet from me. And he badmouthed me saying I was a PR stunt that I did. That He played me directly, a PR stunt to get to promote my pillow. Are you kidding? Maybe you didn't listen right, Jim. I was promoting Jesus. I was promoting Bibles and spending time with our families. He got it a little wrong there. Maybe he didn't listen to the, maybe he only listened to the first part of the speech, which every CEO went up there and talked about what they were doing for the country. And Jim, what are you doing? They're selling things at a profit yeah. for the country. <laughs> so what? I'm making myself richer for the good of the country. Yeah. You know, these were the things that was like, you know, people that said, oh, you're mixing church and state or, or church and God or whatever, God and God in the government. You know what? I did that. So what are you going to do? Put me in jail. Sorry. What? I'm very blessed all of a sudden that I cannot, I could never make uh, or put any ads on CNN. I'll say this straight up. But just recently, I was able to break even on them. So I'm putting them right in here. I got one of their hosts saying bad things about me. And all of a sudden, my commercial comes up. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell. How you doing? Wearing my cross. And there you go.
and uh, that's pretty cool. Not only that, you've you've also doubled down when boycotts have come on for certain hosts, right? Didn't when when they were really going after Tucker, weren't you the one that filled filled the gap? Filled it up back with Laura Ingram. They they boycott. She was the first big boycott that they did, and uh, we ran my ad right at the start of the hour, and I, I just filled it up with my pillow ads. You know, I was the only one basically for a while there, and uh, you know because I, I couldn't believe it, you know, what they were doing. They're trying, you're trying to tell me and you're telling my employees that, uh, you know, let, let me see that you never see their faces either. These are, you know, the hidden ones, you know, and uh, other than, you know, posts that'll say stuff. When I, when I left the White House, I finally, you got my phone back. See, they have your phones, right? And I opened up my phone and turned it on. I looked at Twitter and there's thousands, it was just, People have asked me, well, Mike, do you want to run for governor of Minnesota and all this stuff? I'm, I don't rule that out because you know what? I do know that politics now that I didn't know before play more <laughs> of a role in our daily lives than anything. Everything they do in Washington affects what we do daily. And this is, and I never knew that before. And I don't think a lot of people know that. They go, oh, that's just a bunch of people that argue back and forth. No, it's not. It's real. There's things going on you don't even see. And I will tell you this, I'm going to do so much in Minnesota over the next year and a half, you won't even see any blue. Mr. MyPillow, you feel that uh, Congresswoman Elon Omar has let down the people of Minnesota. In what way? Well, I just think uh, the, uh, you know, I've had uh, different things she's done to, to different businesses where I'm where my business is at. And I think uh, I'm going against Israel and this to me, um, for me, my Christian values and stuff and what our country is all about. And I and I just think it starts right here in my home state. I, you know, um, I used to be a crack cocaine addict. I came out of that and I go, what's going on in our country? What's going on in our state? And and I had to learn all what a conservative was, what a liberal was, what a, I had to learn all this stuff. And then uh, uh, I met the president before he was president and all the things he said he was going to do. And I went all in. And that's how I really got involved in uh, in politics was because of him. Did he answer the question? No. Okay. Right. Well, he, he vaguely said Israel and... Uh, that's literally what I heard, that's just it. the word Israel. Yeah. He has, he, I mean, once again, just like Trump, he doesn't understand the issues at all, so he's just completely bullshitting. Just like, oh man, I just want Christians to do better. <laughs> President Trump says the White House is looking into a new unproven coronavirus treatment called oleandrin. It's made from the oleander plant. It's extremely toxic. It's been used in coronavirus trials involving monkeys, but it's been never tested on people. Mike Lindell is the CEO and founder of MyPillow. He's also the chair of President Trump's re-election campaign in Minnesota. He reportedly helped arrange an Oval Office meeting with the president in July about oleandrin. Lindell tells CNN the president was enthusiastic. Just for our, our viewers, you have no medical background. You're not a scientist. A guy called you in April, said he had this product. You are now on the board and going to make money from the sale of this product. No, no, the no, reason no, he no, reached no. out to you is because you have the ear of the president. So you, he gets no. a meeting with the president and you no, stand to make money from that's this. How do you sleep Anderson. at night? Anderson, that's your narrative. Why would I do this? Ask yourself, why I would ruin money. my reputation if I didn't, if I didn't have believe in this product? You don't have a great oh, really? reputation. What? <laughs> oh, really? This has already had all its safety tests, and it's before the Sir, FDA. Sir, that is just a complete all, lie. That is just a bold-faced lie. Uh, Did you give them all the copies of the study? You don't have one that you read. You said you, know, you read one. All I'm doing is telling the public it works. I so 100% did you read believe one or not? It. Did you re actually read the study? The, study the, one that I, the one that I read was the 1,000 people they did the safety test on, okay. which has been done since Where 2016. Where were people tested? Who conducted the study? They, you'll have to like I don't have it in front of me, but it'll come. It'll come out. Maybe you, you should remember anything that. about what you read. What? Well, and why waiting, should the waiting, FDA and, uh, be wasting time on something like this? Has no proof of anything. The military. You know what? The military thinking, actually looked into this, did uh, tested it, and said, you know and what? Anderson, it's inconclusive. Anderson, We're and, not going to do further testing because it's a waste of time. We have more important. No, things that's to not do. what. The, what? You're a snake oil salesman telling people to take this well, you're product. Calling, you're desperate. You know, you're, why are okay. you? Why are you attacking me? I just want to help. Because you are telling lives. people who are desperate to take something that is unproven, no, I didn't tell potentially them. I'm not dangerous, them. 
and I you have no evidence to back it up. Anything. It's kind of morally bankrupt. What? Just, just in summation, I just want to make sure this is right. You have no medical background. You have no scientific background at all. You have a financial stake in this company. You, uh, you don't know. You can't give any details about an alleged study of a thousand people that you allegedly have read, but you remember nothing about it, not one single detail other than you say a thousand people. Uh, this, uh, this has not been tested anywhere outside one lab uh, in a test tube, never studied against COVID-19, no peer-reviewed, no published studies, and yet you say this is the cure for COVID why is he talking about how God led him to this yeah. cure? I know. If this didn't come in one of his dreams, yeah, then yeah. why should I even believe it? I know. Yeah. <laughs> and you have a history of running ads that you have had to make massive settlements for because they were deceptive, uh, deceptive testimonials claiming medical benefits can, for your Can product. I give you my answer? Can I Please give you my it. answer? No. Um, the first three, you are correct. I have no medical background. I'm not a scientist. I'm, but uh, number, but I did do my due diligence, and you're wrong. There has been studies. And yes, I have been attacked with frivolous lawsuits that I had to settle because I backed the greatest president this country's ever seen in history when I first met him. And I met him, and I'm going, wow, what a great way to have a pragmatic, common-sense president that is the stuff he's done, promises kept, promises made, the greatest president in the history of the United I mean, you're States. You're hoping he's watching, That's so another meeting. Uh, I, I get it. Um, Mike Lindell, <laughs> I, I appreciate you being on. I find, I think, honestly, I just think it's shameful what you're doing. What? As I stand before you today, I see the greatest president in history. Of course he is. He was chosen by God. God bless our president and God bless the United States of America. God chose Trump. Did he, was he just asleep of the president before? Like, like your he God. was busy. He was busy yeah. picking the next president. Well, Is like after Obama, he like woke up from oh, a stupor. Maybe. maybe he was also maybe, on drugs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's gotta be it. He didn't realize that political correctness was such a big deal. Oh, God. He didn't realize that people were saying happy holidays. God didn't realize he was gonna lose the Christ in Christmas. God right? didn't realize. <laughs> God didn't realize that kids were all getting first place trophies. <laughs> and like, that's crazy. So there's one thing God cares about. It is your standing in a little league sports <laughs> league. <laughs>